four World Rally Championship titles, over a thousand horsepower in full drag trim, and a two-litre four-cylinder that left V8s humiliated and supercars second-guessing their pride. This isn't just another turbo engine. This is the 4G63T, the iron-hearted monster Mitsubishi built that redefined what a small displacement engine could do. It didn't just make power, it made history. It's a name that still gives tuners goosebumps, the kind of engine that whispers chaos every time the turbo spools. But to really understand why this compact block became a global legend, it's important to trace its roots back to the 1980s when Mitsubishi quietly laid the foundation for one of the greatest underdog stories in performance history. It all started with the original 4G63 engine, a naturally aspirated inline four that showed up in the 1980 Mitsubishi Gallant. It was intended as a successor to the older 4G52 and joined Mitsubishi's new Sirius 4G6 family. Nothing too wild, at least on paper. But that humble little engine held untapped potential, and Mitsubishi engineers knew it. Because while the first version may have been naturally aspirated, that wasn't the vision. The real magic happened when Mitsubishi strapped a turbo onto it. When the engineers added boost to the equation, the 4G63 became the 4G63T, and everything changed. The first real turbocharged version landed in the 1980 Lancer EX 2000 Turbo. It was raw, aggressive, and powerful for its time. But more importantly, it was a glimpse of what was to come. This wasn't a normal engine quickly reworked for performance. This thing was built to handle pressure. The block, cast iron, the head, aluminum, the internals, forged steel crank, forged rods, and cast pistons that could take a beating. It had all the right bones. Even back then, it didn't feel like a prototype. It felt like a warning shot. The EX2000 Turbo wasn't just fast for the early 80s, it was unpredictable, punchy, and loud. Drivers felt the turbo lag hit like a slap to the face, followed by a wave of boost that shoved the car forward with surprising violence. It didn't care about refinement, it cared about results. And even though it lacked the polish of later generations, the mechanical grit was already there. The engine roared with an almost industrial tone, something you'd expect from a rally stage, not a public road. Turbocharging was still mysterious to most drivers at the time, but the 4G63T made it feel like black magic, the kind that turned ordinary cars into weapons. People didn't just notice it, they remembered it. It gave Mitsubishi an edge, and more importantly, a reputation. Other manufacturers were playing catch-up. Here was a four-cylinder engine that acted like it had something to prove, and it usually did. It made its point not with marketing, but with boost pressure and attitude. For gearheads, it wasn't just about numbers, it was about feeling. And the EX2000 delivered a feeling of controlled chaos. Look at the specs, and it's easy to see why tuners and racers fell in love. An 85mm bore and 88mm stroke gave it exactly 1,997 cubic centimetres of displacement. That magic number just under 2 litres, perfect for maximising output while keeping things compact and efficient. Dual overhead cams and four valves per cylinder kept the airflow moving, and the timing belt system made sure everything stayed in sync. It wasn't just built strong, it was built smart. And Mitsubishi didn't just throw in a turbo and hope for the best. Unlike many automakers at the time, who added forced induction like an afterthought, Mitsubishi engineered the 4G63T from day one to take on boost. It was always meant to be pushed. That mindset became critical when Mitsubishi turned its eyes toward rallying. The World Rally Championship wasn't just a proving ground, it was war. To compete in Group A, they needed a production car. So they created a homologation special, the Gallant VR4. And it came loaded with a mean version of the 4G63T, all-wheel drive and tech, that would lay the groundwork for what would become the Lancer Evolution. The Gallant VR4 wasn't a flashy sports coupe. It was a stealth missile in sedan form. Most people didn't even realize what they were looking at until it left them behind. It featured advanced technologies for the time, like active center differentials and electronically controlled suspension systems, packed into a four-door shell that looked deceptively mild. That dual nature made it deadly. 
On paper, it was a commuter car. On gravel, it was a Predator. The 4G63T inside wasn't tuned for subtlety either. It came alive at full throttle, spitting fire through the exhaust and chirping between shifts. Mitsubishi wasn't just aiming to compete, they were swinging for the title. The VR4 became a rolling test lab for technologies that would dominate rally stages in the years ahead. Engineers pushed the limits of drivetrain tuning, ECU mapping and boost control, all while learning how to translate that into streetable performance. The car laid the foundation for Mitsubishi's rally identity. It proved that they could build something fast, reliable and intelligent, without giving up practicality. It was the car that taught the company how to weaponize all-wheel drive, and it gave birth to a mindset that power means nothing without control. Every Lancer evolution that followed would carry that lesson forward. The gallant VR4 didn't just make Mitsubishi a rally contender, it made them a serious threat. The gallant VR4 was more than a fast family sedan. It was a declaration, Mitsubishi was ready to take on the world, and they weren't messing around. But in 1992, things really took off. The first Lancer Evolution hit the streets, and with it came a sharper, more aggressive 4G63T tucked under the hood of a car that looked like a compact commuter but hit like a sledgehammer. The EVO wasn't just another fast car, it was built with one thing in mind, winning. And it didn't take long to start doing just that. The Lancer Evolution made its WRC debut and by 1995, it grabbed its first victory at Rally Sweden. A few months later, it conquered Rally Australia. But this was only the beginning. Enter Tommy Markinen, the Finnish rally master who would become the face of the Evolution and the 4G63T. From 1996 to 1999, Markinen won four consecutive driver's titles behind the wheel of EVOS, powered by that same core engine. That's four championships in four years, same block, same architecture, just refined and brutally effective. Mackinnon didn't just win, he dominated. His driving style matched the EVO's personality perfectly, precise, aggressive and unrelenting. It was a partnership that made the competition nervous before the first corner was even taken. The evolution didn't just look sharper with each generation, it became a scalpel in Mackinnon's hands. Whether it was the icy forests of Sweden, the rugged mountain paths of Monte Carlo, or the blistering heat of Australia, the car delivered consistent performance under pressure. It was mechanical confidence on wheels. Spectators started to associate that distinctive exhaust note and whistling turbo with victory. The EVO wasn't flashy, it didn't scream for attention. Now, all that race tech didn't just stay on the rally stages, it filtered down to the streetcars. Every lesson learned in competition made the next EVO better. Stronger cooling, refined internals, smarter engine management. Real-world testing turned into real-world performance, and the 4G63T kept evolving. From EVO 1 to EVO 3, the basic setup remained familiar, around 247 horsepower in Japanese spec, though insiders always knew the real output was higher. Japan's Gentleman's Agreement capped published numbers, but owners knew better. These cars pulled harder than the numbers suggested. By the time Evo 4 arrived, things took a leap. Mitsubishi revised the head with a 7-bolt design to improve head gasket sealing and boost tolerance. Power jumped, boost levels climbed, the 7-bolt versus 5-bolt debate became a point of pride, and internet flame wars for tuners around the globe. Evos 5 and 6 refined the platform even further, improved turbochargers, better intercooling, smarter ECUs. Official horsepower was still capped around 280, but dynos told the truth. These cars were pushing 300 horsepower from the factory, and they still had plenty left on the table. Evo 7, 8 and 9 took the 4G63T to its peak. By Evo 9, the engine had evolved into a masterpiece. Variable valve timing with Mitsubishi's MIVEC system brought more torque, better throttle response, and a broader power band. It wasn't just stronger, it was smarter. And here's where the legend really exploded, tuning potential. See, the 4G63T wasn't just built strong, it welcomed modifications. The cast iron block could handle wild boost levels. The internals were tough, 
the head design flowed well, and the factory ECUS, surprisingly flexible, with a bigger turbo, a beefed up intercooler, proper fuel upgrades, and a solid tune, 400 horsepower was easy. And for many, that was just the warm up. Because while other engines cried foul at 500 horsepower, the 4G63T just grinned and asked for more. Tuners around the world took these engines to 600, 700, 800 horsepower. And the brave, or maybe crazy, ones pushed past 1,000. Drag strips became playgrounds. A WDEVOS and FWD eclipses were putting down quarter mile times that embarrassed supercars. And the aftermarket. They went all in. Big names like HKS, AMS, G Ready, and Busher developed full upgrade kits. Want 500 horsepower? Done. Want 700? Easy. Want to join the four digit club? Get your wallet and a set of forged everything, and you're in. The fastest 4G63Ts were running sevens. Let that sink in. A two litre engine built in the 90s running sevens. But it wasn't just about peak power. What made the 4G63T so addictive was how it could be built to fit any performance goal. Want a street sleeper with tons of torque and smooth delivery? Done. Want a time attack car with instant throttle response? Build it with a quick spooling turbo and fine-tuned boost. Or maybe a full-blown drag car with a giant snail hanging off the side? No problem. It adapted, it thrived, and it kept getting better. Later versions got better pistons, stronger rod bearings, improved oiling. The engineers and the tuning community kept finding ways to make it stronger and more reliable. Every weak link had a solution. Crank walk, thrust bearing upgrades, head gasket issues, MLS gaskets and proper torque specs, oil starvation at high RPM, external oiling mods, turbo failures, better maintenance or a proper aftermarket turbo. There was always a fix, always an upgrade. Even with all this power, the engine maintained a sense of reliability that few other platforms could offer. Properly built, a 600 horsepower 4G63T wasn't a grenade on a short fuse. It was a weapon you could daily drive. But like all great eras, this one had to end. Regulations tightened, emissions got stricter. Buyers wanted more refinement. Mitsubishi was struggling financially. By the time Evo X came along in 2007, the 4G63T was retired, replaced by the newer 4B11T, more modern, more efficient. But something was missing. The soul wasn't the same. The 4B11T never captured the magic. It was a good engine, but the 4G63T had something else, character. It was old school performance with modern brains. It could be vicious or docile depending on how it was built. It never pretended to be something it wasn't. And it earned respect, because it wasn't just about the numbers, it was about what the engine represented. A compact iron block with enough guts to challenge legends. An engine that made tuning fun and rewarding. One that brought rally DNA to the streets. One that never asked for attention, but always stole the show. Even now, years after the last Evo 9 rolled off the line, the 4G63T community is still alive and kicking. Builds keep evolving, knowledge keeps growing, and the legend keeps getting stronger. The 4G63T proved something important, that greatness doesn't always come with a fancy badge or an exotic materials list. Sometimes it's just solid engineering, brilliant design, and the will to push boundaries. From gravel stages to drag strips, from daily drivers to eight second monsters, the 4G63T did it all, and it did it without compromise. That's why it isn't just an engine, it's a legacy. If that engine gave you chills, or brought back memories of late night tuning sessions, boost spikes, or the smell of burnt clutch, make sure to subscribe and follow for more epic car stories like this one. Got a favorite 4G63T build or moment? Drop it in the comments. And don't forget to share this with that one friend who's always going on about stock internals.